house, Lord. Yes, thank you, Come Jesus. to our home. Come, come, God. Come fill our spirits, Lord. Please, God. We need you. We want yes, you. thank you, Jesus. We, we love you, God. I pray, God, that you just you nourish all of our spirits, God, and you just bring us closer to you. I pray that you guide us in the right direction, God, and I just pray that you continue to bless us and and to give us good health, God, and to continue bringing us together and closer to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Give God another hand clap of praise, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Worthy to be praised, amen. Bless you, amen. To be in the house of the Lord. Another day, another week, amen. And we continue on, continue moving forward, amen, for what God has for each and every one of us, amen. I want to thank Sister Penny for cooking that pasole. Come on, somebody. We have to sort it after lunch today. Come on. That spiritual hangover. Come on. <laughs> Amen. Um, keeping it simple, uh, just to remind the men, we can talk afterwards, but we do have a men's discipleship tomorrow at 7 30. I'll talk to you guys to see about getting together for that. Amen. Um, and also, just uh, just remind you guys to just continue to just uh, be in the spirit of the Lord, amen, and praying for uh, each and every one of us, amen, as we pray for others and uh, one another so that we can see, amen, what God is doing in our lives. Can you say amen? amen. With everything that's going on in the world, amen, well, how many know we need that prayer, amen? amen. I can tell you this, amen, uh, if we're really honest about it, amen, we can... We can uh, actually probably reference, I know I can. Uh, I had some visitations this week, amen, starting on Wednesday and going all the way up into uh, Christmas Eve. And I'll tell you, there are people that stopped by and said, hey, I just want to let you know, Pastor, I'm praying for you. And I can tell you, I can look back to moments, amen, where I knew, I knew that somebody was praying for me. Can you say Amen. And so in the same, when we pray for one another, we got people that are getting sick. We got people, amen, that are just out there that's discouraged. Um, you know, we, we just got to pray for one another. Just remember that when we're praying for ourselves, remember there's someone just like us, amen, or someone similar to us that is either going through the same things that you've gone through uh, or going to go through some of the things that you are going through or you have gone through. So if we think about that, amen, on a whole, we can think about everything we've experienced, the ups, come on, when we've been doing good, amen, had a guy come by on Wednesday, uh, begin to share some vision, amen, and uh, started saying, hey, man, uh, uh, this is what I'm thinking about, and I began to use Brother Jaime for an example, amen, uh, as Brother Jaime, amen, you know, shared a vision that he had, and already a year into that, amen, he's almost, what, probably 90, 97% complete, amen, we just wait for next year, amen, get that license. Come on, somebody. Amen. And everything else to come together. And so as that person was sitting there, and I began to say, hey, listen, man, we have a brother in the church that was 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 praying for similar, amen, and now we're seeing that come to pass. Can you say amen? So sometimes you may not think that what you've gone through, and it could be in all other things, amen. Uh, it could be uh, in your life. It could be uh, as a couple. It could be. Uh, as a husband, as a wife, it could be as a single individual, amen, when you started to, 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 to get involved, amen, whether you're male, female, and so forth and so on. It could be a, a low time. Come on, somebody. I mean, oh, we've had some low times in our lives. And it could even be a place where maybe you walked away from the Lord or you had some challenges where you wanted to quit and give up. And so if you think about that, when you pray to God, Lord, sustain me, keep me going. Remember, there's somebody to the right, somebody to the left, somebody in front of us, someone in the rears to us that could be similarly going through the same thing. Can you say amen? And so when we're praying for one another, amen, we're reminded, amen, 
that we were once there ourselves, amen. And so many times, amen, I look at my life in the same similarities, amen, being a father, being a husband, working, and thinking about the future, trying to plan for that, trying to live by faith, trying to serve God, trying to do all these other things. And I remember those times, amen. So as I pray daily for you, amen, I remind myself, amen, there's somebody could be at that crossroad. And so maybe you did good. Maybe you made a good decision. Maybe you stayed the course. But maybe some days, amen, we chose not to. And so when we pray for one another, we encourage one another to keep going forward. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Amen. And so when we think about, amen, all the things that we still have to get ready for this year, we're going to end this year, amen, with a joy in the Lord. And we're going to open up to next year, believing God for so much more. Can you say amen to that? Man, if you can imagine what God did this year, imagine he wants to do even double next year, amen? And he's only waiting on us, amen? We're not waiting on him. He's waiting on us, amen, for us to get in line, amen? And that line, amen, is alignment, amen, to get in alignment with God because I know he wants to do so much more in this next year. Can you say amen to that? And so with that, amen, uh, we're just grateful, amen, to uh, come to the end of this year and to really look to see uh, what's going to be uh, laying ahead uh, for us, amen. And if we just pray about that, amen. Uh, also, just to let you know, on, on New Year's Eve, we will be here, amen. Uh, we do pray in the new year. If you want to come a little bit earlier and hang out and have some coffee, hot chocolate, whatever. If you want to get here at 10 o'clock, amen, and hang out for a couple hours and pray in the new year, and leave right after that to go home. I understand the safety and, and all the other stuff that goes on and you know, uh, you guys were last week, amen, uh, uh, we did have that accident at the corner, happened at 2.30 in the morning, amen, so those things do happen, so we have to be careful, amen, and a lot of times I'm out here at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, and I'm praying, amen, because I'll hear the cars just flying by, amen, just, man, and it just, you never know when something's going to happen, amen, so maybe you feel more secure, secure being at home, that's fine, but if you want to come out, amen, just to let you know, we will be here, we will be praying in the new year, amen, whether you are here, amen, in the physical, or you're here in the spirit, amen, it is a glorious time to come together and to pray together, amen, at that midnight hour, amen, thanking God for getting us through 2021, to get us through and into 2022, can you say amen, beginning of the next year, we'll take a, a, a 21 day a fasting time, uh, starting around the uh, 10th or 7th, 7th, 8th, 9th, yeah, about the 10th or the 11th, and we'll go about 21 days of Daniel fast, amen, uh, getting rid of the sweets and different things, we'll be just eating chicken, and and uh, I'll be giving you guys some stuff out there, amen, at the first part of the year, we don't start on July, January 1st, we've never started on January 1st for 20 years at the church, and a lot of people say, well, why don't you guys start it, well, uh, first and foremost, I like ending on the last day of the month, amen, which is the 31st of January, right? Mm -hmm. Or the 30th of January, depending on the leap year. And so uh, we go 21 days, but we go always after. My wife's birthday uh, is January 6th. So uh, it was always an agreement that we would never start on January 1st because then we couldn't splurge on her birthday. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. So we would get through and the holidays and the tamales and the pozole. And then on her birthday on January 6th, then we'd, we'd go out to eat and do our thing, amen. And then around the 10th or 11th, we would start the Daniel Fast with the church. Also, if you are interested in making myself available for the uh, midterm of January to take about two weeks and to gather here every night, amen, yes, even on a Monday night, to gather here for two weeks, amen, and read through the entire Bible in two weeks, amen, in two weeks, amen. Now, I know Sister Penny, uh, you know, she's... Uh, she lives on the east side, uh, side of uh, Beverly Hills, amen. Come on, somebody. <laughs> we have the west side of Beverly Hills and, and Bel Air. And we got the east side of Beverly Hills called Rancho Cucamonga, amen. <laughs> now, she lives a little farther out. I understand that. And so, uh, really, she's the one that I make an exception for that. that you can uh, call in and be a part of that, amen, uh, via telephone, amen. But for some of us others, amen, I really would encourage you guys to come on out. If you guys want to do a Zoom thing, I don't mind that, but I just pray that you would commit to that. If you want to do online, then let's do online. But be faithful to me online. I, I, I think this year in 2022, 
I'm not going to hold it back. I'll tell you, it is very discouraging when we said, and, I, and you got to understand this. I'm a dad, amen. I, I'm a single parent, amen, who has to care for a disabled, a special needs child, amen. And it takes a lot, uh, just like I said today, you know, Sister Heidi asked me, uh, did you sleep? No, I didn't. Uh, I have to do, uh, there's a lot that I have to do so that I'm available today for church. Come on, somebody. And uh, Joshua was just chippier than a chipmunk, amen. And uh, it's cold outside. And normally at, you know, four or five o'clock in the morning, we're walking the parking lot and praying. But it was just a little too chilly. And it was a little bit rainy, too, this morning. So, uh, you know, trying to keep him, you know, inside and stuff like that. So he just fell asleep, amen, uh, between like 8 and 8.45, amen, this morning. And so I've been up with him, amen. And I do that so I can pastor and be here ready, available for you guys. And you say amen. So I'm not, I'm, you know, pity party. Come on. I've been a soldier in the kingdom of God for long enough. I've been in the military and so forth. Amen. I'm not asking for a pity party. I'm just going to pour out my heart to you guys this next year. And to let you know that if you guys uh, want these things, we'll do it. But just take in mind, just like yourself with time management, restraints, constraints, responsibilities, and everything else, being tired and everything we all share in the same loaf of bread. Can you say amen? And so there's a lot that I have to do to make that avail availability, amen. So there's times where I got to keep my boy up. We party all night. And then he gets to rest. Like right now, he's, just, he's looking around for me. And I can watch him with the camera. He's looking right now. He sees the camera. And so he's uh, putting the blanket back over his head. And so the reality is, amen, there's a lot of effort that goes in there. So if you're going to want to do online, just be committed to that. Amen. I, I'd rather have you guys listen, even though you guys can't watch it, even if you just listen to it and let it be an audible thing. Amen. Let's try to do, uh, uh, be more effective that way this year in 2022. Can you say amen? Okay. I'll be open for you guys. Whatever works for you guys. Six o'clock in the afternoon works. If, uh, you know, noon, no, not noon time, but, you know, it's normally in the evening. Normally I would get together at seven o'clock. And we'd spend, you know, a couple of hours, amen, just for two weeks. And we'd go through the whole Bible. we read through chapter after chapter after chapter. Just not speed read, but just go from front to back, amen. And this way you get it done in the beginning of the year. And then, uh, but we can do 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock or 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock. It will be on Zoom, please. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it can, it, it can be on Zoom. Okay. It'll be for you because, like I said, you live in the East Side Valley area. And so, you know, us peasants down here, man. You know, <laughs> uh, but, uh, so, you know, she lives further. And, and sister, uh, you know, she's uh, she's a miracle walking every day. She got here at eight something. I'm like, my God, man, this this woman of God, man, she's she, she keeping me on my toes, man. And so uh, she got here super early, man. She's faithful. And like I said, she's a walking miracle. So I take that into consideration, especially at night. Amen. And I don't, I'm not saying because you're not young, but. You know, it's just you live further out, so, you know, so forth. And so, uh, but if you guys all want to do it on Zoom, that's fine. We can do that. I don't mind that. But uh, just to take in consideration that uh, it is a, a disheartening, amen, to uh, see a blank screen, amen, and nobody shows up, even on Zoom, amen. So just take that, amen. And uh, we'll, 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 we'll get it done, amen. I, I, I've done this for many years. Is there an easier way that you... Oh, no, no okay. it's perfect. Yeah, it'd be perfect for you. Yeah, it's Zoom. This way, I it's up to our camera, or if it's next door, I use one of the tablets, and I'll sit there and 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 we'll do that. Like Wednesday's message. I mean, I just I did it on the tablet. You know what I mean? So it, it works better for me because I can record it and then I can put it wherever we need to put it. So we. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, this I understand all that. Uh, and that's why I'm making it available, you know, but I just saying, I want to make it flexible for you. You know, um, it's not the where I'm going to take attendance and you guys are sitting there and you have to watch it. Even if you have to uh, 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 sit there and just listen to it, you know what I mean? At least this year, get the listening done, get something done, right? We got to, we got to grow. We got to go to that next level. So if you're washing clothes, you're getting the, the kids ready for bed and getting ready. I know. Yeah, man, I'm telling you, man, when you have kids, it takes me and Josh three hours in the morning to get ready. I got a dog. I got to get the dog going. 
You know what I mean? I got to pack bags and everything else, man. When we get in the car, I got to make sure that my son has backup clothes in case he has an accident. All these things. So I'm, when I when I'm doing whatever I got to do just to go to the store, and there's my there's times where I'm like I don't need that, but it's just it's one of those times where you don't take it right, mm-hmm. and then you need it. Come on. So it's a regiment for me. So I understand you got to get ready and all these other things. The kids got to get up for school and so forth and so on. Amen. But let's make a commitment to that. Amen. If you're willing to take it up a notch, I can give you guys free reading so you can read like, you know, read, you know, Genesis chapter one today and then Matthew chapter one today or Genesis chapter one and two today. So on your lunchtime, you can do that and do that. And then at night we can do chapter three and we'll cut it down to an hour. But then that means you have to do some homework. So that's on you guys. Amen. But uh, I want you guys to understand in 2022, amen, I'm, I'm available for everything and anything we need to do as a church. Amen. The only thing that's going to be missing is going to be you. Amen. It won't be me unless I'm out of town. And then, you know, Brother Jaime, I know he'll step up and, and cover me, amen, and take up, you know, and challenge you to cover me and take up and so forth and so on, right? But other than that, it, it, the only thing will be is that it'll be just you missing. Amen. Uh, and so I'm I'm gonna I'm, I'm available and we'll make it happen. Can you say amen? amen? Thank you guys for your faithfulness in 2021. Amen. And uh, uh, one thing that I would want to remind you guys is that uh, the reason why we have you guys fill out a uh, uh, an envelope, amen. Especially you know you guys are developing, right? You got your company going and stuff like that. So when you fill out those envelopes, amen. At the end of the year. Uh, when you own a house or you do all these other things, you got expenses, uh, get that record returned back to you so you can uh, use that against your taxes and get some of the credit for your donation. That's the reason why, you know, when people come in and they'll say, well, I don't need to, I don't need to keep a record. You know, God knows. Uh, there's two things, amen, and it's not about giving right now. I'm just letting you guys know because it's the end of the year, right? And so, you know, there's been people that have sent in offerings, amen, donations for the homeless, uh, donations to do some painting. And so I know it's the end of the year. They want to dump some money. They're going to pay that in taxes. So why not give it to a good cause, right? Instead of paying it in taxes. So uh, uh, they do that with a check. They do that because then they have a record. Amen. We report uh, every year, every month. I send in a report and so forth and so on. But for you, one, if you uh, if you're doing taxes, if you're doing a long form, you get to take those contributions and you need to write them off. You get your tax credit for that. Can you say amen? And, and, and so, uh, but also, I want to challenge, challenge you because there's another reason why. When I first, you know, when I went, as a kid growing up, I was raised and taught about giving. And so even when I was 12 years old, I know you're 10, right? So a little, about maybe even a year older than JC, I mean, I was already mowing lawns. And, and at that time, I man, I didn't need all that money. I was, and you got to understand this, I'm 52 years old, I'm 53 next year. But I was only 11 years old, and I was making like $12 a lawn. And I was doing like five lawns a week. So I had my own lawnmower, my own gas can. My dad didn't let me use none of his stuff. I went out and bought my own stuff. And so I'm mowing lawns, but I didn't need 50 bucks a week. So I was that kid who would go out, and because I understood the principle of giving, I'd go out and buy, you know, those little chunk, those little uh, chunky bars, you know, they were the little square ones and foil. And, and so I'd buy me like two of those chunky bars, a couple of soda pops and a couple of, you know, chickle sticks and, and some chips, you know. And then whatever I spent, it was like, you know, two, 225 for all that back then in the day, right? Then I would take another 225 and I'd save it for later on in the week. And the rest of my money, I would give it to my grandfather. I would give it to my grandfather. I would give offering. And, and so... Uh, sometimes my parents get, hey, can we borrow money? Nope. I don't got no money. Why not? And because I, I gave it. I gave it an offering. Amen. And, and I'll be honest with you, and, and I don't mean to put my dad on black, but, but I didn't learn that really giving from my dad. because My dad wasn't that good of a giver in those times. Amen. Today, he's a great giver, and he's a faithful giver. Amen. But I learned by the gospel, amen, the principle. Now, I'm saying this because as I grew older, I knew there was going to become a time when I needed that finances, amen? And so I sold it then to later on, God returning it back to me later on in years later. 
So when I became an adult and I first got married, uh, there was a principle that was taught to us in the church. Challenge God. So when I got out of the military, I'm working three different jobs. And so I started giving, but I started using an envelope. Even when I could only give $5, even when I could only give $8. When I got married, I began to see God grow. And I said, you know, Lord, I want at the end of the year, I want a record of what I was able to give to you. And in that, I want to see you increase that. Amen. So in one year, maybe I gave $5,000 or maybe $2,000. And the next year I said, God, you know what? In order for me to increase this, you got to increase me. Amen. And so I, I, I want to share this with you because I was able to challenge God that way. There was a, there was a moment. I, I could tell you this much right now. And, and I share this. We went from 10% to like 50% tithing and offering to God. Even till this day, even till this day that my wife's passed away, we still give about 50% tithes and offering to the church. And I still live. You see what I'm saying? So maybe you don't have, amen, a house and all these expenditures. Let God increase you. Come on, somebody. Amen. Come on, I, I could use a raise, you know, and even my son, my son tithes, amen, and, and there's a cola coming on, come on, somebody, he getting a little bit more on his social security, come on, sister, yes, yes, there's a huge cola increase, yes, starting this next pay period in January 1st, so for those that are retired, they're getting a good kicker in there, amen, and so I'm like, praise God. Because, see, the reality is, that's how faithful God is. Come on, somebody. But sometimes, amen, uh, we get to a place where maybe, maybe we don't remember how God, how good God has been. Sometimes we can forget. Can you say amen? Mm -hmm. So with that, amen, I want to thank you guys for your faithfulness this year in 2021. We have just been so blessed, amen, to see what God is doing. And I can't wait to see what God is going to do in this next year. Amen. Mm -hmm. We've seen more people give to the church outside the church. Uh, donors, amen, just giving, amen. And, and I'll tell you, amen, it was the last leg of the, of the year. But, uh, you know, uh, we'll always end up in the red because we're nonprofit. We don't make money. Amen. But I tell you this, amen, we're going to be good. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 We're going to be good. Give God a hand clap for that. Amen. So as you guys continue to give, amen, I, I, I just, I, I honor you guys for that, amen, and I know, just like anything else, amen, it is not easy to stay faithful, mm -hmm. say amen, There's so many reasons and excuses and, and challenges that we all face, amen, uh, uh, to, to continue, amen, and, and, but I'll tell you, amen, when we just trust God, amen, he'll see us through miraculously, amen. So let's pray this morning, amen. Father, uh, as we just come before you this morning, we thank you. For us giving to you, God, in all our lives, God, it's not even a fraction. It is just a, a mere token of what you've already given on our behalf. Father, I am praying for increase. We've had individuals, God, that were out without work and, and, and affected by the pandemic. There were some, God, that were on uh, unemployment. And we saw that extension come to an end. We saw the challenges, God, of uh, the eviction memoratorium, amen, coming to be challenged to ending and people facing eviction. And whether there was extensions and, and whether there'll be new extensions, we, we trust you, God. We don't trust anything other than you, what your plan is. So we've seen, God, you bring work. We've seen you bring jobs. We've seen you bring faithfulness. Sister Penny was sharing, amen, a testimony, amen, of, of a neighbor, amen, a, how just from last year to this year, uh, they're working and, and they're doing, uh, I love to hear that word, we're doing a lot better than we were doing just last year. And so, God, I want to see that for our church. I want to see your church uh, members, God, blessed beyond measure. I want them to see, God, that their visions, their desires, and their dreams come to fulfillment. We do that, God, because we trust you. And I would just, God, as the pastor of the church, I'm so thankful, God, because even the smallest token in merely, God, even a quarter buys a gallon of milk, I mean, a gallon of water in this church. 
But we use water, God, to not only drink, but we use water, God, to make coffee and so forth and so on. But sometimes we think our little, it may not just be enough. But man, God, when we get faithfully, God, it is such a blessing to remind us, God, how faithful you've been to us. And I'm not pushing giving God right now. I'm not trying to uh, uh, do an end of the year campaign. All I'm trying to say, God, is that it's a principle of a form of our worship to you. Thank you, God, for getting us through Christmas. Thank you, God, for the gifts that, amen, that our family was able to receive this year. And it shows us, God, that you have just seen us through these trying times. And 2022 is even going to get gooder and gooder as the days go by. We thank you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. amen. Many times, amen, we, we need to pray in that order, amen, or in that same similarity because how many know we got to pray for our employers, amen? We got to pray, amen, that they don't quit. Come on, somebody. Imagine if you walked into work tomorrow and your boss or your owner of your company said, I quit. That's it. I'm done. Amen. I got enough money in my profits. Got enough money in my savings. I can go buy a sailboat and just retire and, and, and live off the ocean. Come on, somebody. What happens to you and I? Well, without work. Amen. So we got to pray for our employers. We got to pray for our jobs. Amen. That the business continues. That the drywall continues. Amen. That people want to Want to knock down walls and put up new walls. Come on, somebody. Uh, we can't pray for fires, but we can pray for those fires that they come your way. Come on, somebody. Oh, well, let it burn, you know, so I have work. No, right? You get what I'm saying, amen? And so we just got to continue to pray for that. I believe that this year is going to be a powerful year. And so this morning, amen, the message, amen, uh, that God has given to us, amen, will come out of the, 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 the aftermath of the birth of Jesus, but it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a statement that I kept hearing God say to you and I, amen, this morning, God's response team. I want you to think about that. When we think about response team, right, we had this weather coming in last week, and we had this, uh, 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 now this weather coming in the week that we're in right now, and now we have another weather storm coming in next week, amen, with a few days. And so what is one of the first things when we start to see that weather coming in? They start to build response teams, Amen. They start to re build response teams for the burn areas because there's no vegetation and they're in fear of mudslides, right? So on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, we were in heightened alert in the San Gabriel Valley because even the hunting zone behind us in these mountains have been shut down literally almost a whole year because of the fires. And so they were in fear that on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day with all that rain, right? and, I, and I pray, man, I'm like, Lord, like spiritually with my hands saying, Lord, just hold back the mountain. Especially during the holiday, man. I couldn't imagine people sitting around, and you got to understand, not because of COVID, because of fellowship, families being together in one household in the San Gabriel Valley area, and all of a sudden a mudslide coming in and taking all out of two, three different generations of people that would be, that would be in that pathway, amen. So you, we pray for that, amen. Uh, so when we see the, the things that we're experiencing in the world today, amen, we also need to be a prayer response team. And you say amen. When things are going on over the world and over the nation and even international, it is, it is a time for us to be called into prayer, praying for our nation. Can you say amen? And so forth and so on. I don't know if you guys have been watching, but the Highway 18 going up into Arrowhead uh, and Big Bear was shut down. They had a big old sinkhole. One family literally almost went off the cliff. And I don't know if you guys have seen the news, but literally almost the whole lane of the southbound side literally just slid off the mountain what? yes it's been shut down for the last two three days and one family got stuck up there and they almost lost their their, their vehicle went out into that sinkhole and because they were traveling fast enough it just it just like god's hand just kept it over and it went back on and they just stopped it was so foggy and they were there all night and it wasn't until the next morning they came and saved them and and brought them down the mountain. Now that whole site is, is, is shut down. So what I'm saying is that there are certain situations that are going to happen and we don't know how these things are going to unfold. So in our families, we need to be a response team. Amen. When people are getting sick, right? Operations and different things, financial. And, and so we need to prepare to be in that. So we get that mindset, amen, from Matthew chapter 2. 
I'm going to read this portion of the scripture because this is what God has just really been laying on my heart. And so I want to just kind of unfold it. I kind of give you a synopsis of what it's about. Amen. In that response team. Amen. And so it's almost like being on call at work, right? Certain times you have the weekend off, but if your company is open or there's a certain emergencies, amen, I've done damage control work like you, your company does, amen. And so uh, every other weekend we had rotation, right? So there was a fire at night, we worked the night crew. You know, sometimes we get called at 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night. You don't know when something's going to go down. And so it's a response thing, right? So let's look at this. In Matthew chapter 2, beginning in verse 1, the Bible says this. Now after Jesus, now this is after, right? We, we, we got celebrated Christmas, right? The announcement, Mary, she's traveling. And now this is the aftermath. Jesus is already born, right? The day after Christmas, which, which is today. So a day after Christmas, right? So now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Verse 3. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled in all of Jerusalem with them. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they, meaning the chief priests and the scribes, these are the leaders and the overseers of the church. They said in verse 5, he, he was to be born in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler. Say that again. For out of you shall come a ruler. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, from out of you shall come a ruler. I want you to think about that. Amen. Who will shepherd my people Israel? Verse 7. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from what time the star had appeared. In verse 8. And he, sat, he sent them to Bethlehem and he said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king... In verse 9, they departed. And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, in verse 10, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. This word dream, amen, is a prophetic uh, dreams, amen, something that is about to happen or something is being unfolded. And visions, amen. See, the New Testament opens up with a first of dreams and visions and angelic visitations and prophecies. And it closes at the very end of the Bible with John's own depiction of the book of Revelation and on the island of Patmos. Amen. So I want you to see this. Amen. We go from an Old Testament before Christ, right? The old covenant to a new covenant in Christ being Jesus Christ, the King of the Jews. And it begins to open up with this big, great, flow of angelic visitations, you know, visions and dreams and, 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 and prophecies that are now starting to come to pass. Amen. And so when we think about this with God in dreams and visions, yet neither Jesus nor the apostles give any particular precept concerning the phenomenal of dreams or visions. It's somewhat ignatic, amen, in that the Bible does not teach about dreams and visions. In any systematic manner. So there's no way like, you know, first you got the vision, then you get the dream, and then you get the interpretation. Or, you know, first you get the prophetic word, then you get the vision, and then there's no system to it. It just cites that throughout the Bible that the significance of its appearance or examples 
of so many visitations. We know that the whole story of Jesus is an angelic visitation moment, right? Joseph is visited by the angel of the Lord in Matthew chapter 1. We see that Mary is visited by the angel of the Lord in Matthew chapter 1. We jump into Luke chapter 2, and we see that, you know, Zechariah, amen, is visited, amen, while he's serving at the high priest in the synagogue and the burning of incense, amen, at the time of the order that it was his lot to fall on to be a servant in the sanctuary, amen, that he was visited by the angel of the Lord. We know that Elizabeth is visited by the angel. Of, you get what I'm saying? So we had all these angelic visitations. And so it validates that their existence is true. And it is used by God as a means of communicating to his people. Amen. And it's a means of communicating to God's people. Can you say amen? We need to be careful of those who only claim to worship the Lord in word but not in spirit and in truth. See, these wise men, they came. Now, I want you to understand this. They're from outside the area. They're out there tending, right? The shepherds and uh, tending to their flocks by night. Amen. The wise men come. They get the message from the shepherd. The shepherd, amen. We've seen the star that's been prophet, prophetically spoken of. The wise men gather together. They travel into Judea, Judea, amen. Now, it is the customary. They went to, the say, the the, the, the judge's office, right? They went into the main place, amen? And so what they do is they go in there and they ask for permission. Hey, where is this Christ Jesus that is born to us? That is born to us, amen? And so in that, amen, they, 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 they come to King Herod who is supposed to know these things. Can you say amen? Supposed to know these things. And so he doesn't know. Now you got to understand this. He's Herod the king. He's the king of Judea. Amen. Now how many times do we as God's people. We don't know the entirety of the word of God. Come on somebody. Amen. That we don't know certain things. Amen. Like I, how do I do this? Or how do I get involved in this? Or how do I grow here? Or how do I go there? How, how does this become something about my lifestyle? You get what I'm saying? So it's not, it's not uncommon not to know these things or to experience these things. But the reality is, it is true. It is a reality. It is a reality for you. Now, King Harold, he didn't know all these things. So what does he do? He calls the people that are supposed to know. Can you say amen? amen. He calls the, the chief, the, the, the chief priest. Come on in. And the high priest and all the scribes and all the Pharisees. He calls them in. So as he gathers them together, he starts to ask them, hey, where is this child, the king of the Jews, uh, is supposed to be born? And they say, well, look at what the prophet said. In Bethlehem, in the land of Judea. So he's starting to follow all these things. Now, here's the key word. And this is why a lot of times we'll say this, amen. Be careful when people call you aside in secret. Sometimes it's not so uh, 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 godly. Can you say Amen. The Bible says that King Harold called the wise men aside secretly. Amen. And so uh, in the spiritual sense, amen, he, he, he wanted them to believe that he wanted to work. What did he tell them? You go search carefully for this child that is born and you bring back word to me so that I may go and worship him also. I want you to get that. You go do the work. You go search for Jesus. And then I'll come once you get it done, and I'll worship the Lord. Can you say amen? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, just not picking on anything of us as people, but, but that's sometimes what happens even today. Amen? We want God to move. You know, many times we'll get people to come to church, or, you know, right, like I said, you know, we got uh, churches going through it. Amen? We just, a uh, local church down the street lost their pastor. We got people leaving and exiting, exodizing uh, as an exodus out of the church. And people are always looking for another church. Can you say amen? They're always looking. They're always hopping around and jumping around and everything else. So I, that's not the problem. What, what grieves my heart is when people come looking for a church and they come and they start complaining about the other church that they didn't like. Come on, somebody. How many of you go to In-N-Out and go, hey, you know what, man? I can't stand McDonald's, man. Right? You don't. You go in and out because you like in and out, right? 
You don't go to Burger King and go, oh, man, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to try you guys out today. But, you know, Jack in the Box, man, they're terrible. <laughs> you know? Lettuce is soggy. You know, uh, the, the tomatoes are overwrought. You know what I'm saying? We normally don't do that. But why is it that we do that in the kingdom of God, right? So many times uh, people come in and they'll be like, oh, yeah, I'm looking for a church. But, you know, let me tell you about the last three churches. Man, I don't want to hear about all those. If they weren't good, I don't want to know because I don't want to go there if they're not good, right? <laughs> but the reality is, amen, we know that just like King Harold, that spirit moves today. Amen? He says, go find Jesus. We can't rely on others finding Jesus for us. Can you say amen? amen? We need to be on that journey ourselves. Amen? We can't wait for Sister Penny to get all filled with the Holy Ghost and then, you know, right off of her skirt tail. Come on, somebody. Amen? We got to we gotta have that relationship where we're digging in this next year in 2020. That You know what, man? Let's get into it together. Come on, somebody. Let's go find Jesus together. Amen? Or, or you on that road and I'll be on this side. Either way, we're all going to meet in the middle, but we're going to find Jesus no matter what. And so when we come to church, amen, the, what disheartens me many times, amen, is when we come to church and we feel like the spirit of God is not moving. So my question drops back down is how do we partner to make sure that Jesus did move today? Come on, somebody. Amen. I pray for those new boots. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hit that bass drum. Come on. Right? Because, and, and, I, and I told JC the same thing. I said, it's not cool if I do everything, right? JC, get on there. Work the sound. And, and she did, man. Just like the council, they said, if the commercial comes in, just cut it off and act like, and don't panic. <laughs> and that's exactly what she did. But the commercial came on because she forgot to press pause. But you know what? She looked like a pro. She didn't go, ah! She, she's sitting there. The commercial comes on. You know, dogs there in Los Angeles, Long Beach, right? And <laughs> quick, she hit pause. She went back. She looked. She looking around. And she, she moving her fingers and she, she getting all this. She looked at me. She goes, "Man, commercial." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's the joy. She was part of what God did during worship. You know what I'm saying? It's not just me. It's not just you. It's all of us together. And the reality is this. As a church in 2022, if we all come in the like-mindedness in one accord, that we just want Jesus to show amen. up today. Can you say amen? amen? I'll tell you this. If you're praying that Jesus is going to show up, and I'm praying that Jesus is going to show up, and you're praying and you're praying, guess what's going to happen? Jesus is going to show up. Come on, somebody. And I got I guarantee you one thing. We're all going to leave filled with the with, to the brim with the Holy Spirit. We're going to be filled with the brim with Jesus. Amen. Ain't nobody going to leave this place unsatisfied. Come on, somebody. Because even if you didn't want to be here like JC. <laughs> Did I say that all Now She's waking up now. But earlier she wasn't awake, right? You know what I'm saying? I don't want to go to church. Woo! Come on, somebody. But more than one, the Bible says, where two or more are gathered together in the spirit of God, that he is among the midst of them. Amen, brother. If you're praying, and brother, you're praying, and I'm praying, and no one else is praying, guess what's going to happen? I'm an ex-fireman. If the room catches on fire, all we need is a little bit of heat. Come on, somebody. If that whole room gets to a certain temperature, everything in it ignites. Come on, somebody. Everything in there. It's called a flashover. It gets so hot in that room that even things that have not been touched by fire, that the flashover consumes everything in the room. Come on, somebody. We need that. We need the person, the husband who don't want to be in church, the wife that don't want to be in the church, the kid that don't want to be in the church. Come on, somebody. You've been made to come to church. Okay, I'll, go, I'll come to church just to keep my wife quiet, you know, get her off my back. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I'll just, I'll come to church because I want mom and dad to buy me that movie. Come on, somebody, right? Maybe they want, but if we're praying that Jesus shows up, he's going to ignite everybody. Come on, somebody. There have been days, amen, growing up in the faith, amen, as a kid. I don't, I don't want to go to church. We went already this week. We already been to church this morning. Man, I remember revivals that went seven days. Amen. By the end of the week, I didn't want to go. Man, I don't want to. Man, I'm tired. We go home. We have to get to bed late. Still get up and go to school. And now it's Friday and Saturday. Man, we were done. There were moments, amen, I didn't want to be there. And I'd be sitting in the back row acting 
you know, like a like like a punk kid that I was, amen. Getting in trouble, talking, laughing. And all of a sudden the speaker in the front, amen, was freaking, would just start, start speaking the, the, the word of God, amen, and it would penetrate. Come on, somebody. There was times, amen, I got filled with the Holy Spirit, didn't even want to. Come on. And left that place excited. It began to build a deep love for Jesus, even out of an adolescent age. Can you say amen? See, the world needs obedience. This is what this is about. Imagine, I want to, I want to take you guys there. Because the title is God's response team for 2022. Yeah. Amen. God's response team. And how's that? Because we talked about these, these understandings. The wise men were told by the king. He was the ruler, right? He was the one in charge. Right? Mm -hmm. And so he tells them, you come back and bring me word. So they go. They find Jesus. They give him gifts. Frankincense, myrrh. Right? They give him gifts, but the Bible says in verse 12, being divinely warned in a dream not to go back the way of Herod, they went a different way to their own country. Come on, somebody. Amen. How many know that was obedience? Amen. See, the reality is we talked about prophetic dreams, visions, right? And angelic visitations. And the reality is it's no system to it. Come on. You can't figure out what order it happens. It's just the evidence in the New Testament that they existed. Come on. That God speaks to us in those manners. Come on. We need, amen, the world needs obedience and response from God's people so that the world can be reached and saved. Can you say amen? Think about this. Response, obedience. The wise men responded. They were obedient. Joseph, how many of you know we've been teaching about Joseph, right? And leading up to the birth of Jesus for Christmas. Joseph was visited by the angel of the Lord, and he was obedient. He kept Mary as his wife. Mary, she was troubled, and she was obedient to the spoken word. You have found favor with God. But here, she responded by saying, behold, the maidservant of the Lord. Let it be as you, your word say, amen, and it be done. So there was obedience and there was response. Can you say amen? amen. Now, I want to give you a reference. In Luke chapter 1, we know that Zechariah was a bit of obedient, right? The angel of the Lord visited Zechariah and said, hey, your old lady. That's what the Bible references. His wife who was old of age, right? The old lady. She's going to have a kid. And Zechariah did not believe it. And what did the Bible say in Luke chapter 1? That he was mute. He was mute until John the Baptist was born. Amen? So we saw the response of not being obedient. Amen? So we see the response and obedience of, of Joseph, Mary, the wise men. How about when the disciples were called, Peter and John, uh, James and John, and Peter and Andrew, amen, the fishermen, amen. In Mark, Matthew chapter 4, Jesus says, drop your nets and follow me. Imagine if they weren't obedient. Imagine if they didn't respond. They didn't say, oh, well, you know what? Hey, uh, let me uh, let me build up my little 401k a little bit. No, you know what I'm saying? Let me, let me work it out with my dad. No, the, Jesus showed up on the scene and said, drop your nets, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And the Bible says immediately. They dropped their nets and followed Jesus. Can you say amen? amen? They were obedient and they responded. Paul, the apostle, amen, known as Saul, when he was making his journey into Damascus, amen, on that Damascus road, amen, and he started to argue with Jesus, amen, and he smited, amen, he's blinded, amen. But after that, the Lord told him, get up and go to this house by the man's name of Cornelius. When he responded and he was obedient, God began to do something through Paul's life. Can you say amen? amen? Moses was obedient to lead the people out of Egypt. How many know that Noah was obedient, right? To build the ark. Not because, the, because you know, he, he wanted to believe that there was going to be rain. They were in a famine time. There was never that much rain and that much water. But I want you to understand, not only did he respond to God, but he was obedient. So obedient. They use exactly every dimension 
every length and every particular of wood that was needed. Amen. Well, it's no different, amen, than we go to a job, right? And we, we, you know, we're in construction, right? We got blueprints, we got plans, right? Medical orders and everything else, right? Whether you're in dental, whether you're, you know, you're a nurse, you have all these procedures, right? And we must follow them to a T, right? The blueprint tells you what piece of two by four to use, uh, what length of wood to use, what nail, what fastener, right? All these things. Well, Noah was the same. He was obedient and he responded to God. And how many know we are here today because of that? The minor prophets, amen, in the latter part of the Old Testament, they were all obedient and responded to the Lord, amen? No different than Habakkuk, no different than, than, than Micah, no different than Zechariah, amen, and so forth and so on. Elijah was obedient to the Lord, and Elisha followed in that same, that same footstep. When Elijah told Elisha, if you're standing here, when I'm taken away, you will get a double portion of anointing that you've seen in me. Come on, somebody. Amen. And how we know Elisha was there. Can you say amen? And who's the greatest obedience example of all and responded? Jesus. In the Garden of Gethsemane in Matthew chapter 26, amen. He said, Lord, God, Father, let this cup pass me by. If it can, oh, find somebody else. But let it not be what I want. Let it be what you want. And because there was no response, he responded. Come on, somebody. We're always looking for some type of response time. The world and society that we live in today is looking for a response time. Let me give you some examples. The fire department, we're looking for a response time. And when they return or show up from a call, police departments, job application. You ever put a job application in? You've been waiting for that call? Come on, somebody. How about roadside assistance? Ever been broken down? Come on. I tell about the story, man, when the RV part, when I was parking it illegal right in the front, took them like eight hours, nine hours to show up. Come on. Then the city city happens to show up on that day, and I get caught. I'm like, my God. They said, do you do a survey? Yeah, only if I could tell you how terrible your response time was. If you would have just showed up 30 minutes earlier, I wouldn't have gotten caught. Come on, somebody. Roadside assistance, amen? How about a loan application? Is it going to get approved? It's going to get approved. Oh, Lord, please let it get approved, right? How about callbacks? You ever made, You ever been waiting for somebody to call you back? Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. Response time. How about the internet? Come on, somebody. Social media. You get all mad because you can't, you know, log on to your Twitter account or your TikTok account, amen? Or you're trying to look through something, right? It's, it's, it's lagging, right? It won't load. Come on, somebody. And you start doing this. <laughs> I love it when people start doing this. Like, that's going to make it work faster, right? Come on. My wife was terrible at that. She was on the computer. She said, I'm like, stop getting the mouse. It's not going to be. Yes, it is. I go, it's an hourglass. It's doing something. And she's like, okay. <laughs> she keep, uh, or when she would grab it, she'd hit the mouse. Oh, yeah. you, ever, you ever see people do that? They hit the mouse. I see that every day. Oh, what is it? Okay. Well, leave it alone, right? <laughs> Response time to sickness. Sometimes we don't want to go through the immune system development. We just want it fast. Come on, somebody. We just want it fast. I'm not going to get it too vaccines and all that, but come on, somebody. God created us in a unique way that our bodies, he knows how we are to operate. Come on, somebody. And our body, amen, is, is so fascinating on how God intricately created each and every one of us for its own natural and organic defenses, amen? But sometimes we just want it now. We just want it now, right? We don't like being sick. Come on, somebody. We don't like feeling weak. Come on. We don't like to feel out of it. So we're looking for a response time of recovery. How about weight loss? Come on, somebody. <laughs> well, I ate 10 calories less for lunch today, but I still look fat. Yeah, but you, come on. You know, dieting without working out doesn't make sense. Come on, somebody. Dieting without working out is just a fast. <laughs> right? If you're dieting, you got to work out. You got to stop taking it so much. I don't know why I'm looking at you. 
got to stop. <laughs> you got to stop taking it so much. Right? But you also got to burn what you already got. Come on. Poor Johnny. You were just in my lane, my line of sight. Maybe the Holy Spirit didn't want me to look at it. He just didn't want me to look at the brother Jaime back there. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you know what I'm saying? You, you got it's a twofold, but we just want rapid, rapido. We want it now without any effort, right? And we see that in in bodybuilding, amen. We see all these schemes and and everything else, right? They're shooting up, uh, you know, steroids and everything else, everything to make it a lot more easier. Can you say amen? And here's the key one: we want a quick, rapid response time with our problems. Come on, somebody. We just, we don't want problems, right? We don't want any inconveniences. Amen. I was sitting down, amen, this morning. I was thinking about that, amen. I remember back, amen, that uh, one moment uh, my wife had told me, she's like, why does everybody always call you when it's right, like right when you're going to sit down to eat? I said, because we told them to. And she goes, when did you tell them that? I said, every time we tell somebody, hey, if you ever need anything, give me a call. <laughs> right? You never know. You always know that it's never going to be where it's convenient. But see, that's the problem. We get to a time in life, and then we'll say things like that. Hey, if you need anything, let me know. And then when you get the call that they need something, then you're out. You're put out. Amen. You're infringed on. Come on, somebody. We don't want. We want a good, rapid response time in our problems. You know, I've been that guy. Amen. And said, Lord, just let the problem linger long enough that I learn from my mistakes. Come on, somebody. I don't want to do this one again. Come on. I don't have, I don't, you know, maybe in the Lakers, you say three feet, right? <laughs> maybe in the Clippers, you want a three feet or four feet. Amen. But I'll tell you, amen, when my problems, my trouble, my trials and tribulation with Jesus, I don't want a two feet. Right. I don't want a three feet. Come on, somebody. I want to get it done the first time. Can you say amen? amen. Lord, I want to learn by my mistakes. If I'm going through a problem because it was a decision that I made, that I got out of your plan or out of your will, or I didn't listen to you. Come on, somebody. Or I haven't been a, a obedient to your will in my life. Then let me go through it long enough that it gets through this thick head. Come on, somebody. Maybe you might learn in an hour, and maybe it might take me 24 hours. Come on, somebody. Or 72 hours. You get what I'm saying? I just don't want to wrap it time through my problems. I don't want to be saved from my lessons in life. What I do want to be saved is at the end of my life that Jesus says, enter in, well done, good and faithful yeah. servant. Can you say amen? Yeah. And others are always looking to us in our response time. Come on, JC, you understand this, right? Kids response to parents. When your parent says, you know, I don't know about JC, but I grew up that way, right? My mom would be in the other room and say, literally. And if I said, what? Ooh, boy. Chocolate will come around the corner. Bah! Why'd you do that? I call you, you come. Right? I wasn't that kid. Little Ray. Wow. You hear it. We were raised. If you heard your name called, come on, somebody. You didn't go, why? They're like, Little Ray. Hold on a minute. Yeah, mom. That was, that's. Ooh, she was like, ooh. One more second. I was going for it. I, was like, about that. I got here less than two seconds. Man, well, your response time better get better, boy. You know what I'm saying, right? We're looking for response time. Amen. In the fire department, the police department, the medical, all these other things. You go to urgent care, you want a, a quick response. You don't want to be sitting there for three hours. Come on, somebody. Going to the DMV, we're complaining about the response time, right? Yeah. Took me four hours at the DMV. What's wrong with these people, right? Yet there are others that are looking to us in our response time, like our parents. How long did it take you to say what? How long did it take you for you to clean your room? Come on, somebody. We're looking for response time in our spouses, right? How long did it take you to throw out the trash? I'll do. I'll be right there. Three hours later, honey. I know. I'm gonna get six hours later. What? You're always nagging. No, I'm not. I'm asking you to throw the trash. Get up. And take care of business. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hello? You got some good amens on that one. <laughs> How about workers and employers? Right? Your employer tells you to do something, gives you a requirement to get something done, though. Doesn't your employer look for a response time? Yes, 
Come on. If you if you talk to your employer like you would talk to your mom and dad, what? Excuse me? Your employer goes, oh yeah, really? Let me just sign this check right here. Just go on with your bad self. Don't even come back. Come on. Customer service to workers at a retail store or a restaurant. We're looking for a response time. Can you say amen? And no different is God looking to us in our response to him. Can you say amen? In our response to him. See, that response team is where God is leading us to in this next year. Why? Because you can always look back to the word of God. We just read, amen, from verse 1 in chapter 2 of the book of Matthew to verse 12 in the book of Matthew, chapter 1, or chapter 2. In those 12 verses, we see response. We see obedience. Come on, somebody. He describes the Pharisees that were called by King Herod, amen? They were, they were responsive, right? They said, well, the, the prophets, they said he'd be born in Bethlehem, in, in, in the land of Judea. The wise men were told, amen, to not go back and give that word to Herod, amen? And they were responsive, and they were obedient, amen? And I want you to understand this. The wise men went another way to their country, meaning that it wasn't their convenience way. Come on. It wasn't their normal way. How many, how many know we have a normal way of doing things? Come on. And when God is dealing with us in our lives, sometimes he'll ask us to do something that we're not accustomed to. Can you say amen? amen. He'll ask us to go away that might even be a little longer than what we mentally and wisely would say. I, th why would I go that way? Come on, somebody. And I'm going to tell you this. Every time I leave this parking lot, I was back in. That's old, you know, construction, driving big trucks, you know, y'all was back in, you know. But the reality is, amen, I was back in. And before I put that car in drive, I always ask the Lord these two questions. Do I leave that parking lot or do I leave this parking lot? I always ask them. You want to know why? Because I can't see over that building and I can't see around the building. And there's sometimes wherever the Lord tells me to go, I'm going to cast somebody right at the corner here. Or I'm going to cast somebody around the corner over there. And so even when I'm pulling out of the church parking lot, I say, Lord, which way am I going to go? When I'm driving in Ontario, going through Pomona, I'm going wherever. I say, Lord, do I take the 210, 10, 71, 60, 90? Which way am I going today? Am I taking the low road? Am I going down Arrow Highway? And I can guarantee you this, amen. There's not a time that the Lord tells me to go a certain way that I'm not going to run into somebody. Come on, somebody. And I love it because I'll catch people slipping. <laughs> I just catch them slipping. Like, how did Pastor show up here? What's up, brother? <laughs> Haven't seen you in two months. My God. You know? And I'll tell you this. Many times it's the, it's the, the hard-driven guys who hang out at the motel next door. They know the pastor's at church. They know it's Sunday. But they're running them up next door. And they don't want me to see them. So sometimes they say, okay, you can't see me over there because the bushes are right there. But there's sometimes I'll be sitting in the, in the car and I'm look, getting Joshua ready and I'm, I'm praying, okay, Lord, do I go there? And they just tell me, wait. And I'll see one of the brothers go, running. <laughs> running. Running. <laughs> like this. <laughs> Looking to see if I'm, at the, in, in, if I'm in the church. Yeah, literally. Come on, somebody. Many times you'll say, I'll, man, the Lord will tell me, open up the curtain. I've opened up the curtain. I'll see somebody driving through the parking lot. Slow down. Stop. I'm right here. Mm. Man. Come on. One time you were, you, were at the, you were at the tooth shack. Holy Spirit told me, go buy tacos. I'm not hungry. Go buy tacos. I went buy tacos. You were over there looking for that pin for your, for your, remember you drove in? And I was right there. But now I, I know why I'm paying tacos. And you weren't missing anything. It was, it was an off day. It was like a Saturday. But the Lord wanted me to see my brother. Come on. So you got to understand, when we are responsive to God, when we respond to God, amen, that, that we're obedient to what his desire is, amen? amen. He knew that Herod was going to do exactly what happened when those wise men did not respond to King Herod. There was a great massacre. Every child two years and under, every male child two years and under were massacred. They were murdered because King Herod did not want to worship him. If he really wanted to worship him, 
And why was he murdering them? He wanted to hold, defeat, and prevent the greatest gift that you and I have this season. And I want you to understand this. We're getting into 2022, and the enemy is even going to be on more on fire. He's going to be out there wanting to destroy, kill, and steal the faith of every human being that believes in Jesus Christ. Our faith is under attack. And it's not under attack because we're being assaulted. It's under attack because we're not being spoken, outspoken about our faith. In other words, amen, it's under attack by keeping us silent. Amen. amen? Listen, I, I want to challenge you with this because this is what the Lord told me to end with. Amen? How many times when we know that we could share the love of Christ, but we find it more better, for lack of better words, or we find it uh, more feasible or more adequate to just stay silent. In other words, you're at work. Maybe you're with your family and you don't want to like, you know, really upset them. Maybe you have a knowledge of your family living a certain way. And you feel that if you say anything about God, that they're going to feel like you're judging them or that you're condemning them. Come on, somebody. So sometimes we just, we rather not say nothing. Amen. And that's our natural reflex, amen? Well, I don't want to fight. I, 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 I don't want to argue. And it's not about that. Listen, you and I today have one of the greatest gifts, just like America. I posted a, a little thought about that, amen, uh, yesterday morning. America, amen, we have the greatest gift that everybody's looking for. Liberty and freedom. Now, we know it's under assault. We know it's under attack. But people are trying to get into America because of the liberties and the freedoms that we have. Amen? And just like America, the church has a message. And that message, amen, is freedom and eternity. And the faith is under attack by every moment we stay silent. Amen. I mean, you today, there was a time back in the past, amen, where there, were, there was crime going on. There was all these things going on. And you could actually step up and tell somebody to calm down. Like, hey, man, calm down. It's not, not that big of a deal. Today, you risk the chance of getting stabbed. You get the chance of getting, you know, risking the chance of becoming a statistic of getting shot because you try to say something. Listen, I just shared this. Last weekend, we just had a 37-year-old man get murdered right around the corner. A family of three, teenage daughter and two kids under eight years old, another son and another daughter. 37 years old, a UPS driver. He was in his front living room. Somebody was breaking into a car down their block. As he came out, heard the, the scuffle, the guy trying to get into the car. Other residents came out. There was a total of about 11 people. So when they started walking to the car, the guy who was trying to break into the car, he was actually in the vehicle, got out, took off running. They all jumped in their vehicles. They went around the corner. They caught him. They were confronting him. They called the cops. They were trying to retain the guy. As he gave himself a little bit of distance, 11 people were gathered there. He pulled out a gun, and he started shooting. The 37-year-old man was the only one that was hit by a bullet. He was dead on the scene. And all he was trying to do was step up and do what was right. That's the society we live in today. Now, for Christmas, his wife and his three kids how to go through Christmas without their father, without their husband. See, we're under attack today. The gospel is under attack. And every time we stay silent, we allow it to be diminished. We're going to get to a place where no one's willing to step up and stand out and share the faith. Listen, there are people hurting. That RV was sitting out there, they're hurting. They're not poor. They're not even homeless. They were just broke down. And I shared in the post, I found myself just literally a month, November 25th, December 25th. It was Thanksgiving evening. I called you. But he was in California and I was in Texas. <laughs> Ain't nothing he could do. Didn't have a helicopter. <laughs> Didn't have a jet. And there I am, me and Josh. We broke down. Mr. Gotti's pizza. Thanksgiving night. There we are. Then he said, why did you call us? And I, and I was honest with people. I said, because I didn't want to inconvenience you. 
A lot of times when you think people call you, they need something, right? What do you need? You need money, you need help, you need all this. And the reality is we need to be a people of God who welcome to other people that we can be inconvenient. Yes, sir. You can inconvenience. Brother, I don't even know you, but you can inconvenience me. You can call me 24 hours a day, literally. They all know that. You can inconvenience me. If you're not inconvenient me, somebody else is. Come on, somebody. You heard me say that. If you don't take up my time, somebody else will. Amen? Somebody else will. And rather than just be a stranger on the street, take advantage of it. Brother, you can inconvenience me. When the moments I'm like, ah, it's the brother. <laughs> ah, I don't want to answer the phone. I just took out the rocky road and it's just <laughs> I'm good enough mounted right now. I'm going to have to put it back in the freezer. Oh, here we go. Ah, what's up, brother? Thank you for inconveniencing me. That's why a lot of times I say, no, thank you. Thank me. You're the one to help me. Yeah, but thank you for allowing me to be who God called me to be. Come on, somebody. Maybe you're called to encourage somebody. Maybe you're, you're called to the office of an evangelism or you're called to a pastoral calling. And when you get called on, it is a joy to do what God created you to do. Come on, somebody. Like, they worship. Thank you. Thank you for breaking in those new boots. <laughs> no, Thank you, Sister Heidi, for being faithful, coming in and doing worship. Amen. Thank you, brother, for visiting today. You give us the opportunity to be a church beyond us. Come on, give God a hand clap for our visitor over there. Oh, he's an angel of the Lord. Come on. God, we don't know. And so the, the reality is, amen, let us be inconvenient in 2022. Or maybe we eat dinner just a little bit late. Or maybe we just have to pop that plate in the microwave. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. Or eat it cold. <laughs> or throw it in the oven. Amen. Or just don't eat. Fast to the next morning. Come on, somebody. But whatever it is, Lord, I can go without. I can go without this hour. The other night, amen, I got a phone call, amen, day before Christmas Eve. Two and a half hours later, I was on the phone. I couldn't believe that two and a half hours went by. But there was encouragement. And I want to, one of these days when the result of that phone call comes to pass, I will let you know. Because I'm praying for the individual on that phone call. Because see what people will learn. Is that that person, them as a couple, when Claudia and I owned the house across the street and we had just started the church, we met that couple 20 some years ago in our front lawn as we were doing a yard sale to raise money for the youth to go to conference. And they inspired us. And we hadn't even been out a year yet. Today, man, 20 years later, we're still going because of that one moment. Come on, somebody. So two and a half hours. Yeah, it was an inconvenience. I wasn't planning for that. And I didn't get to go eat. I was invited to go eat. I didn't make it. I didn't show up. Come on, somebody. It's all good. Because we need to be inconvenient. Can you say amen? amen. So in 2022, let's be God's response team. Can you say amen? amen? Something happens in New York, let's be God's prayer response team. Let's get on our knees and say, you know what, Pastor? This is happening in Wisconsin. This is happening in Florida. I want to pray for that. Okay, come on. Lead it. Let's go. Come on. Let's pray. What time do you want to pray? Give me a time slot, and I'll pray for two hours. You take two hours. I'll take two hours. Somebody else take two hours. Let's be God's response team. Amen. Right now, we got people that are sick in their body because of COVID. And take, be a response team. Let's pray for Sister Sylvia. Yes. Let's pray for the Lopez family. Amen. Let's be that response team. Can you say amen? Because we don't know when we're going to need to be that response team recipient. Can you say amen? When we have a situation, when we have a need, come on. I'll tell you one thing. When you're vulnerable and you have no one and you're out of your space and you're out of your zone, amen, it is vulnerability. Amen. We're sitting in Mr. Gotti's Pizza. Everybody's breaking bread. It's around 6 o'clock in the evening. I'm looking at my boy who can never have a care in the world. He's looking at me. He's all happy. Like, and I'm like, I'm glad you're happy, brother, because you don't even have a clue what's going on. But I'm a nervous wreck. But at those moments, you just trust God. And this is what I want to tell you that. We had two breakdowns in this last trip. But in this, in this trip, 
there was a total of like fifteen dollars worth of food carriers. Fifteen dollars. One cable battery cable cost me six bucks. The other one was like maybe twelve dollars, but I didn't even pay for it. They bought the fuses for me and replaced the fuse. But man, I thought it was the end of the world. Because I'm like, I don't have a clue what just happened. We're dead. We got no power. And it was just a simple fuse. Took time to troubleshoot it, but it was the glory of the moment and just trusting God. Man, we slept like babies in that pizza parking lot. Come on, Thanksgiving evening. We ate some leftovers. Come on, somebody. Now, I didn't use the microwave. Come on. Because I didn't want to run the generator. It was a little lukewarm. Come on, somebody. We still ate those chicken nuggets. Like, man, they were right out the door. Mm -hmm. yeah. ah, we ate them. We ate those fries. Come on, I ate some cold onion rings. Man, didn't taste no better than any could be. Boom, ate it, went to bed, woke up the next morning full of sleep. Come on. Not a worry in our life. Half an hour later, man, we're back running. No problems. From there, all the way back home. See? Sometimes God just wants to meet you. Come on, somebody. He just wants to slow you down just enough that you're willing to respond to him. Can you say amen? Mm -hmm. so sometimes those setbacks are, 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 are ingredients for comebacks. Come on, somebody. Those moments when you're on the side of the road and you don't know which way you're going, come on. God just, he, he got your attention. Turn around to your neighbor. He got your attention. Why? Why? Turn around to your other neighbor. Why? Then tell somebody. Because out of you shall come a ruler. Come on. We said it earlier. Did you get it? Did you get it? Remember you told you to tell your neighbor, out of you shall come a ruler. What does that mean? Out of you personally? Out of your children? Amen? Out of your grandchildren? And how about this? Out of the very gospel that you would share to a stranger, that that stranger may come a ruler for the kingdom of God. Can you say amen? amen. Let's give God a hand clap. Amen. amen. This morning, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just come before you this morning, God. And we know, Father God, 